another classic Itinerary Kit. I used it many, many times since I started armor modeling, but I haven't seen it for a while. Let's take a closer look. The box art shows drawings and we also find the amount of all items included. Well, not all numbers are correct because there are two bazookas, not only one. The back of the box is the instruction sheet for those items that need to be assembled. we find wooden crates, bed rolls, duffel bags and many infantry weapons. With regards to the age of this kit, the moldings are nice and there are delicate parts like this tripod. The buckles on these bags look rather simple, but as far as I know, this is the only kit that includes these duffel bags. There isn't much flash and the seam lines appear to be easy to remove. In my opinion the martyr is nicely detailed. Although flash is not the problem with this kit, we can see here what the trouble is. It's a kit with many ejector pin marks and many of them are in weird places. The molded on handles on these cans don't look too well from a today's point of view. I'll replace them when I get around to building the cans. And now for the worst ejector pin marks. Although the wood grain looks really nice on these boxes, there are two ejector pin marks on each part. And these are the visible sides of the boxes. Fitting and sanding them can be a nightmare. Back in the days when this kit was released, most modelers didn't care too much about things like this. Nowadays it's completely different and Italeri should change the molds if possible. If you wanted to show the crates open, it would even be worse because there are many sink marks. Then again, the infantry weapons are nicely detailed and I like them even better than the Tamiya ones which are of about the same age. But there are nasty ejector pin marks on the anti-tank rifles that almost destroy the good impression. The rising moon, oh my heart, where souls are happy to I'm in just that kind of a mood. The US and British submachine guns are nicely done. Dance until the crack of dawn, making love on. The front. And again, eject the pin marks on the brand gun. A loving nod in fields of gold shall we both trod around the world. Just me and you, I'm in just that a kind of a mood. Holding hands, love. As you can see here, there's not much of a seam line on the weapons. Time to the Point 30 machine gun and the tripods are okay. Of course they're not slight molded and it'll be difficult to drill out the muzzles. The tripods come as one piece each, whereas the Tamiya ones need to be assembled. I don't know which I prefer, but these look nicely detailed. This is not the year of the kit's release. The ammo and magazine pouches look a little too stiff, but can still be used. The helmets look good as long as you only show the outside. The rear parts of the bazookas are poorly done because they should look like a basket with openings. I guess at that time it wasn't possible to do modes like that. Champagne bubbles, Cupid's brew to usher in. This kit shows light and shadow in about equal portions. Keeping the age of that kit in mind, it's still okay. It's cheap, I only paid 9 euros 50 and it's full of useful items. On the other hand, one has to do a lot of filling and sanding to make the stowage and weapons look good. I don't care too much because I'm used to it. If you don't like that kind of work, you might prefer to buy some resin accessories. They're more expensive, but of course the details are better too. Question, 
comes to mind. Wedding bells will say I do forever now. It's